Hello students, welcome to the session. This session is on aeration of water. I am Mr. M. H. Mota, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering. The outcome of this session. At the end of this session, you will be in a position to understand the importance of aeration along with various types of aeration methods used in water treatment. So let's get started. So aeration. As we have studied, aeration is one of the important unit operation of gas transfer. In this particular process, we generally transfer the different gases either from water to atmosphere or from atmosphere to water. The gases what we want to uh, eliminate from the water like carbon dioxide or hydrogen sulfide are removed while we add the gases like oxygen to improve upon certain parameters of water so that it can be more acceptable for the intended use. The aim of the aeration is to create extensive new and self-renewing interface between air and water to keep interfacial film from building up in thickness. So in aeration we generally create the different surfaces which will interact with the air. The surfaces of such water created should not be thick in the uh, nature so that there will be more and more contact and there will be an easy transfer of the gas. The efficiency of aeration depends on the amount of surface contact between air and water which is controlled prelim preliminary by the size of water drop or air bubble or thickness of water lamina created. So in this process we improve upon the contact of air and water by converting the water flow in terms of either a water drop or in terms of a certain thin water lamina created or we introduce the air in a body of water in the form of air bubbles so that there will be more and more or extensive contact. So the objectives of aeration. Aeration of water is done to accomplish the following objectives. First, it removes the taste and odor. Generally, the taste and odor are caused due to the organic decomposition of the organic matter present in a water. So aeration removes such taste and odor up to certain extent. It increases the dissolved oxygen content of the water. Dissolved oxygen content is essential to add the freshness of water. More oxygen content generally results in making water more fresh and making water more acceptable. As we need the oxygen for our body, the higher amount of oxygen present in water always help us to maintain the oxygen level. It removes the hydrogen sulfide and hence the odor due to such material. It decreases the carbon dioxide content of water and thereby reduces the corrosiveness and raises the pH value. It also converts the iron and manganese from their soluble state to their insoluble state so that these can be precipitated and removed. Generally, when we add the oxygen, the iron oxide or manganese oxides are formed. When such oxides are formed, their change in state is occurred. Generally, iron and manganese are present in a water in soluble state, but their oxidized form is always insoluble and this helps us to remove these things by precipitating. Due to the aeration of water during such thing, the bacteria may be killed to certain extent and it also used for mixing chemicals with water in certain cases. So the types of aerator. The aerators are divided under three basic heads. Out of that first is free fall aerator or gravity aerator. The gravity aerator is further subdivided into types like cascade aerator, inclined apron aerator, slat tray aerator and gravel bed aerator. Out of that, the first three methods are generally used in water treatment 
while gravel bed or trickling bed aerators are used in the treatment of wastewater. Next is spray aerator and last is air diffuser basins. Let's try to understand it in more details. We'll start with cascade aerator. This figure shows the cascade aerator. Cascade aerators are the simplest of the free fall aerators. Weirs or waterfalls of any kind are cascade aerators. A simple cascade aerator consists of series of few steps like 3 to 4 steps as shown in figure. The height of such element is around 1 to 3 meter and due to this it comes in intimate contact of the air. When water is entered, generally it enters at the center and then it is allowed to uh, fall through a series of steps under the effect of gravity. This particular thing helps us to form the thin layer of water or even it creates certain droplets of water. And which rather results in more and more contact. The overall procedure is also helping us to build on the thin layer or the thin lamina which are continuously renewing and in this process generally the aeration takes place. The cascade can be either in open air or in very rarely cases it is installed under a roof which can be uh, full of the fresh air. It generally reduces the carbon dioxide in a range of 50 to 60 percent. Next type is inclined apron aerator. This figure shows the inclined apron aerators. This figure will help us to understand it in more details in which there is a one inclined surface the top of which consists of the inlet channel and water is allowed to flow through the inclined surface. On these inclined surface, generally certain rifle plates or the improved surface has been installed. The water is allowed to fall along with along on that inclined plane or apron which is usually studded with as explained earlier certain thing called as a rifle plates which is in hearing bone fashion. The breaking up of the sheet of water will cause agitation of water and consequent aeration. Next is slat tray or slat tray aerator. This is a most commonly used again. It consists of closed round or square structure consisting a series of closely stacked superimposed slat, slat trays. Water enters the top of the aerator and is evenly distributed over the topmost tray first. The slats in the tray or the holes in the tray are staggered so that the film of water running over the edges of the slat in one tray fall on the center of the star in the tray just below. Air is supplied to the bottom of the aerator with the help of blower in few cases which blows it in upward direction which helps to have the good amount of aeration achieved. Water is collected in the collector pan at the bottom from where it flows to the catch basin or reservoir. Next is gravel bed aerator. So this figure shows the gravel bed aerator cross section. This kind of bed is used in the treatment of wastewater. In this again water is cascaded through the beds of either a coke or limestone or anthracite or in most of the cases particularly in wastewater treatment a certain bed consisting of the gravel and this help to have an certain amount of aeration as the air present in this gravel bed is helping us to achieve a certain amount of aeration. This is a figure of trickling filter which is based on the similar kind of uh, principle and used for the treatment of wastewater. In this bed generally the dosing is done on the intermittent basis. The dosing is not continuous. This helps us to have 
the gaps in between the dosing which help us to have an entry of water in between the two consecutive doses and in that certain aeration takes place and help us to achieve the certain amount of aeration. Spray aerators. This figure indicates the spray aerators. The spray aerators are useful for the water treatment as this even is helping us to achieve a certain amount of aeration as such. In this process, instead of having a certain sheet of water, we convert the water into a small droplets. That particular spraying can be in the vertical direction or can be in the horizontal direction. The small droplets caused because of the impact of or installation of spray help us to have an intimate contact between the air and the water which in course help us to achieve the process of aeration. Next is air diffuser basins. This figure indicates the piping arrangement of air diffuser basins. In this basins, the air is introduced with the help of certain nozzles which are installed at the bottom of a basin and those fine air bubbles with the help of a certain nozzles or air distributors help us to have an intimate contact once again with the water. These pipes are generally installed at the bottom and when this kind of basin is full of water and air is introduced at the bottom, obviously it will travel in an upward direction and will help us to achieve a certain amount of aeration. Once again, such kind of basins are used to treat the waste water. The limitation of aerators. The major limitation is that it does not have an effective removal or reduction of taste and odor caused by non-volatile substances like oils or algaes. As these are non-volatile, the air is unable to remove the taste caused because of such thing. Taste and odors caused by chemical due to industrial waste discharged into a receiving water are even not satisfactorily reduced. The aeration may in some cases add more oxygen in water, making it more corrosive. The possibility of airborne contamination in water in such case is more. Additional lime may be required to neutralize the carbon dioxide that would be removed by aeration. Now there are two basic methods used in India for the aeration. One is cascade aerator. The design parameters for cascade aerators includes the deciding surface area or in other words the diameter of a unit then a height of units the contact time and last is the number of steps essential for such kind of element to achieve the effective aeration well second is fixed spray aerators the factors affect the hydraulic performance of such includes the orifice and nozzle behavior wind effect needs to be uh, considered and pipe friction associated with multiple takeoff is one of the important design parameters. So that's it for the session. Let's meet in next session to learn the design of cascade aerators. Thank you for having me and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe the channel for your continuous learning. Thank you.